Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. In this one we're looking at a laptop from late 2002, the Compaq Presario 1500. Originally sold for around 2000 USD, weighing in at a hefty 3.1 kilograms or 7 pounds, and it reported 2.5 hours battery life, the Presario 1500 was designed to be a desktop replacement laptop with mainstream performance. Desktop being the keyword, with its weight and size, laptop use could be a challenge for some. It also featured a desktop processor, a standard socket 478 based Pentium 4. As was the style in 2002, this laptop was sold with an ATI Mobility Radon 7500 discrete graphics solution. This was ATI's first laptop graphics that had hardware transform and lighting, or TNL, and was the second generation of the Mobility Radon product line. It primarily competed with the NVIDIA GeForce 2 Go. On machines like the Dell Inspiron 8100, you could configure and swap between the cards. As a repair technician back around this time, I saw a lot of these types of graphics appear on higher-end laptops. It was an exciting time because you finally had a laptop that didn't stop you from playing 3D games, even if you did need to stick to modest settings and resolutions. The MR7500 was built on the 150nm process from TSMC and could consume up to about 27 watts of power. With the power play feature, it could downclock to 66 MHz and drop down to less than 1 watt power consumption. Useful for extending battery life and still getting modest use out of the graphics. A bit like battery saver mode on today's laptops. DVD acceleration was offloaded from the CPU so you could watch a movie like The Matrix and blast out a spreadsheet at the same time. Yes, this really was a feature back then. It did support DirectX 7 and OpenGL 1.4, came with 16 or 32 megabytes of memory. We've got 32 megabytes of DDR in the Presario on a 128-bit memory bus. Taking a look at the exterior of the Presario, we can see that it's solidly built. The hinges feel firm and are secure. The keyboard has got good sized keys with decent travel. The touchpad is quite small, common for the day. Compaq put a few other touches here with media buttons and a navigation d-pad at the bottom of the touchpad. At the front there there's an LCD latch and some wide speakers made by JBL. On the right hand side we've got a battery compartment, CD rewriter and DVD combo, infrared window, and a 1394 or Firewire port. Moving around to the rear of the laptop, we've got quite a bit going on here. There's microphone input, headphone jacks, a barrel connector for the AC adapter, two USB 2.0 ports, the GPU fan, S-Video out, VGA, PS2 keyboard and mouse combo, parallel, modem and ethernet ports. A door covers some ports and is supposed to make it look a bit nicer, but I find it just gets in the way. Finally, on the left-hand side, we've got a CPU fan exhaust, a PC card slot, and a good old 3.5 inch floppy. This laptop was sold with Windows XP, but today I've decided to experiment with the older Windows 98. Let's take a look at Everest for a closer look at what's inside the laptop. Standard stuff here. Pentium 4 at 2.2 GHz, an i8 45MP chipset, 256MB of RAM, might be worth putting in another 256 later, Radon Mobility 7500 using the Omega drivers. Just a side note, if you do want to use this laptop with Windows 98, the driver situation is a bit tricky. Omega setup doesn't work. Just extract the drivers and load manually. Similar things happen with the audio and other drivers on this laptop. We've got a 20GB Toshiba hard disk, another common one for this time period. Flipping over to the GPU section, we can see the MR7500 supports DirectX 7 and is using a 128-bit memory interface with DDR. But the question is, can it game? I'm going to put this Presario 1500 with its Pentium 4 CPU and Mobility Radon 7500 graphics through a few games and synthetics to see if we can get some retro gaming love out of this old workhorse. Starting with Unreal Tournament 2003 benchmarks, the MR7500 handles 480p with no sweat, but drops significantly in a 7080p resolution. I'd recommend with this particular setup that you keep it at 640x480 resolution at medium quality details. Trackmania Nations, a newer title from 2006. Medium settings at 640x480 seems to be the sweet spot, but 800x600 or even at a pinch 1024x768 in low would also be playable. No problems with Quake 3 here. 
Excellent frame rates on raw resolutions and quality settings. It's not surprising, as by 2002, Quake 3 was already getting on a bit, and while I was still kicking it in LAN parties and online, it was no longer pushing limits of PCs, and some of the crowds had started to drop off. Serious Sam, the first encounter, was released in 2001, a year or so before this laptop. As you can see, the MR7500 has no problems here, even on the quality preset. We get excellent frame rates even at 800 by 600 Now onto the synthetics. In this video I'm using 3D Mark 99 Max and 3D Mark 2001 SE, and I tried to get a good variety of resolution and colour depths. Under 3D Mark 99, for the 640x480 16-bit benchmark, I got 11648 as a score, and when compared to the other runs, it seems a bit higher than usual. While synthetics are not always useful, in this case it shows that the MR7500 can hold a good score in 640x480 and doesn't completely die off even when using 1024x768. Well there we have it, the Presario 1500 with its mobility rate on 7500 GPU under Windows 98. It's time to wrap up this video. These early 2000 laptops are often thrown away as e-waste, but I recommend you can get them on the cheap, pick it up anyway. You can have a bit of fun with early, less demanding Windows XP games, and in some cases, if you do a bit of research, you can even get something like Windows 98, and sometimes even DOS, game compatibility working. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this laptop from 2002. 20 years is a long time in gaming, and I think we've come a very long way today. I'll leave it there for now, and hope to catch you in another video soon. Bye for now.